Evan, live in the studio here with uh, Chris Arps. Chris, how are you? I am doing fantastic, Mark Cox. Well, you know, I every time Chris is in here, I, I he brings his camera and he turns on his uh, Facebook app yes. and he shoots live video. And all this time, I thought he was interested in getting us both in the picture. But <laughs> what I've noticed here is really only interested in having himself in the picture because it's only pointing toward him. Well, see, because usually this is in the old studio. This was the Marco- the uh, Jason Church spot, and I would be over here, so I would use his mic as that the is the Michael- Jason Church spot. You're okay. using the wrong spot. Yeah. That, that's all right. No big deal. It's all about you. It's man. all about you. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, we know that now. But that, that, you know, that's Becky okay. tells me often. You know, Chris, it's not always all about you. <laughs> Still haven't figured out what that meant. I've yet. heard that once or twice. Twice yeah. in 25 years, yeah. so no, I'm just kidding. I haven't figured it out yet. So, so your thoughts on these uh, these twin um, shootings we're dealing with now? So, uh, Alton Sterling, they just, they announced today they're not pressing charges against the police officers, and you've got people screaming for justice out in Sacramento. What are we looking at here? You know, and this is kind of sad to say, I am vaguely remembering the Alton Sterling case exactly the circumstances surrounding it. I know it is an unarmed black man that was shot but i really don't remember all of the well, circumstances I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, listen to this okay it was just after midnight on july 5th last summer when a homeless man called 911 from the parking lot of the triple s convenience store in baton rouge to report a black man in a red shirt had pulled a gun out of his pocket to threaten him baton rouge police officers blaine salamony and howie lake the second responded to the call the videos which are disturbing show that the officers arrived on the scene with an immediate goal of ensuring that Mr. Sterling's hands were in control and not able to access a weapon. Two different videos of the shooting quickly emerged, but video doesn't capture the beginning of the altercation between Alton Sterling and the two officers. Federal investigators say Sterling was told to put his hands on the hood of a car and didn't comply. But Sterling's family, who met privately with Department of Justice officials, say there's more. More to the story. I, I cut that off a little early. Yeah. But but the the bottom line was, they. this is the video where you see them, the, the video that made air showed the cops tackling this guy to the ground, struggling with him to get his hands handcuffed, claiming that he was reaching into his pocket, and they shot him at close range, shot him okay. to death, right? Yeah, no, and, and then the police, uh, Louisiana Attorney General came out today and said, listen, they they responded to a report of this man with a gun, so they knew rolling into it that he had a weapon because that's what the phone call was. And after they shot him, indeed, he had a loaded thirty eight caliber handgun in his pocket, which they claimed, and the video shows his hand was g- reaching toward. So they didn't, based on Louisiana law, they didn't find a reason to charge these officers with wrongdoing. I don't think that's going to matter in the in the reaction because they, they've already hired a Benjamin Crump right. uh, to prosecute this case. Well, unfortunately, what we've seen in all of these cases that have ended in tragedy of a black man being shot by a police officer is the perpetrator was in the process of breaking the law or was not complying with the law. You know, no one deserves to have their life taken, and that's not what I'm saying. But if a police officer tells you, show me your hands or comply, you do that. I mean, especially in these times, in these situations, and what we've seen uh, in the court of law and public opinion in a lot of cases, the police officer is going to get the benefit of the doubt, especially if you're breaking the law. I think in the bigger picture of the if there are some violence that happens from these two cases, I think it may drift into this uh, the the Parkland shooting, the massacres and all of that. And, you know, these young kids have said they're going to make gun violence part of the elections. And I think if they do that and this gets mixed up in it, you're going to see Republican, the Second Amendment advocates advocates come out in large numbers in November and beat back this alleged so-called black way or blue way that is coming yeah i i I don't know um but i back to your point there in in the case of alton sterling the police say he he clearly that 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 it didn't meet their the the standard for police wrongdoing because the the police had reason to believe he was armed and in the end that was true but in this stephan clark case in in uh, California, 
Listen to the initial police call. They had they had reports of uh, vandalism in a neighborhood. People smash and grab yeah. stuff in in car windows. First thing you're going to hear is a guy calling the police to report what was going on. Listen. I see breaking windows of cars. He busted both my truck windows out. He busted these in the people's backyard right now. So so the last thing you heard there was a police. Um, officer in a helicopter Mm -hmm. with an infrared camera on the bottom of it who saw the the video shows the guy come up to a window and whack at it with something and then when he hears the helicopter he takes off running so the the helicopter tracks him police arrive on the scene they start chasing through backyards till it gets to his grandma's house Mm -hmm. apparently where he was trying to get in the back door when when this happened now if this is disturbing to you i apologize for it because you're going to hear the actual gunshots but you hear the warning by the police, and then you hear the gunshots that were fired in this case. Listen. Somebody here, it's gun! Somebody here, it's gun, gun, gun! Five, seven shots fired, seven, eight down. So two officers firing their guns warned him to show their hands, and then they thought he was pulling out a gun. Now, for all we know, apparently he didn't have a gun on him, maybe been pulling out a phone or whatever he was doing, in the dark, in a backyard, and all they had on him was a flashlight from and, that distance. And there's one aspect of this case that's not getting a lot of attention, is that one of the officers was an African-American, so this wasn't two white officers that this that this happened. I mean... A lot of a lot of the community gets angry in these type of situations because I think they look at it as, hey, he was breaking windows. Um, He didn't deserve to have his life taken because he was out breaking windows. Why did he have to be shot 20 times? Why couldn't you have shot him in the leg or, or wounded him? And we see that type of sentiment so many times in these cases. And I'm not a police officer, and I wouldn't, could never imagine myself in that position. But if you see that video, it's a completely almost dark backyard, uh, probably not in the greatest of neighborhoods. The, the guy is asking, please show me your, not please, but show me your hands. He's not doing it. What other really choice do you have? Well, they're they're of course claiming that he didn't he didn't he didn't deserve to be killed for it. And I, I guess the thing I keep coming back to, whether it's the um, the Anthony Lamar Smith case here, which is a good example of it, um, th- this case, the the Alton Sterling case, in each one of these cases, something precipitated the police being called in to a situation. Um, if you were at home sitting in your living room watching music videos on television, you wouldn't have been in that situation to begin with. It's not like the police are, and I'm sure it's happened before, but it's not like they're just randomly kicking doors down and killing people in their homes for absolutely no reason. I I, I think that's a common thread through a lot of these cases that the the defense, particularly Benjamin Crump, wants you to overlook. And when you make that argument, you're you know, told that you're being insensitive. But we were all told as kids, if you go out running with the wrong crowd and if they get arrested or you're in a car somewhere and, and they've just committed a crime and you've done nothing, you're going to be, you're going to go down I brought, just being with them. I brought, I brought this up to Liz earlier. And there's so much profanity in it and probably some copyrights <laughs> involved that I couldn't play it on the radio. But if you've never watched that Chris Rock piece he did mm-hmm. on how not to get your blank right, kicked, right. Uh, it's worth a watch. Just go Google it or something and watch that thing because he's he's. He, I know he's trying to be funny, mm-hmm. but he speaks so much truth in that that if the cops call you over, be polite. You know, don't 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 be smart off to them. If they tell you to put your hands up, put your hands up. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of truth in that thing. Well, I, every African American male is taught that as an early age, right? Especially when you get to driving age. If my parents told me, "Don't ride around in your car with a whole bunch of people. If you get pulled over, it's yes sir, no sir. Make sure your hands are on the steering wheel in plain sight. Don't sass them. Nothing. I want you to come home." Well, but that clearly that lesson has gotten lost in in a lot of communities. I, I think. Yeah, obviously. Dude, what we've seen these cases where people are running from the police or they're not following police commands, and, you know, unfortunately they're losing their life. I mean, if I was in that situation where that young man was and the police are, are yelling at me and it's a dark situation, I am instantly getting down on my knees, I'm throwing my hands up in the air, and I'm practically begging for my life 
officer, I have no weapon. I have no weapon. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. I mean, that's what I would be doing. Right. Which is what everybody should do, regardless of, of the of the color of your skin. I mean, honestly, it's just some of it is just common sense, and others, like you said, parents have had to teach that lesson at an early age, uh, because uh, more frequently in the past than now, but I know it still happens. People are pulled over because they're profiled. It, it happens. We, we we know that that happens, but it's still that's still a good rule. So already out there, mm-hmm. we've seen evidence of people with the hands up, don't shoot protests, blocking highways in Sacramento and all that. So I suspect we'll hear even more of it today. I'm sure. Chris Arp's got to run, buddy. Thank you. I hate to leave the studio. Can Thank I just you. hang out for the rest of the show? Thank you for the wine. I appreciate <laughs> Thank it. you. Uh, Enjoy. At C. Arps on Twitter. Uh, back with more of the Mark Cox Show after this. This hour of the Mark Cox Show brought to you by Naputi Wellness, NaputiWellnessCenter.com. Hey, you know what? The folks at Beck Estate Planning and Elder Law can put your mind at ease about what's going to happen to you, what's going to happen to your loved ones, what's going to happen to your estate one of these days if you can no longer take care of it. At some point, it's going to be out of your control, and that's what Rudy's going to sit down and counsel you on. Listen. If you don't think your estate's big enough for a trust or you don't think there's a good reason to have a will, you have to understand what's at stake here. Uh, A little bit of work now can save your loved ones a lot of headache down the road. It can give you the peace of mind that you're going to that you're going to have the resources to pay for your care. Listen, if you or your spouse are a veteran and you serve during certain time periods in the past, there may be thousands of dollars available to you to take care of you. Um, if you're put into a hospital. So just call them. Beck Estate Planning and Elder Law. You can reach them at 